Hi all and welcome to the shop. My name is Greg Loreau. I'm the owner of Moose's Gunsmithing and Machine Shop. Uh, I'm cleaning up today because I brought a bunch of new tools and materials in and today's as good a day as any to take a video and share some of the stuff that happens in here. Uh, these are my kind of, this is my normal toolbox for really probably about 75% of the gunsmithing jobs that come in the shop can be done just out of this box, you know. I've got stock tools, screwdrivers, punches, a few specific gunsmithing tools. Uh, you know, it's I got a pile of stuff. This is a barrel that I still need to put on someone customer's guns. I got a bunch of knives I made. If I put this back in my pocket, but this is a good kind of general starter kit. You know, you get most commonly tools up, use tools up top. This is just my junk collector. I got extra center drills in here. These pins, these are actually really handy. These are out of old ball bearings. You know, this is just random junk that you don't really know, need like just reamers. You don't really know what you're going to use stuff for, but it's good to have. Just chemicals in this corner. This is really as far away from the ignition sources I have in my shop. I'm, I have a fireproof cabinet, I just haven't put it up yet. Um, there's more junk. You know, this is kind of the grinding corner, belt grinder. Sandblaster is going to get tucked away, I haven't used it in months, so. This is a sweet old Delta bandsaw. I think I got this out of an old boss's estate for 150 bucks. It was a great deal. You know, I use it fairly regularly, and it's a junk collector. You know, this is an old circular saw sharpening vise, but I gotta pull it out of there, clean it up, and mount it. You know, this is kind of more the woodworking side of the shop. I got a chop saw, because this is great for building workbenches. You know, my drill press, which I don't really use too much anymore, because I've got the milling machine, but it's great to have. You know, my electrical box, just a pistol carrying case, saws all. Just random junk on this side, you know. I always have a hard case to take customer guns in the rain to the range just as a policy. Um, finishing the spray booth slowly. This is another really good thing to have actually. Um, I'm due to change the filter on it. This is a airborne HEPA filter. So this will pull oil mist out of the air, which is really important in a small machine shop like this with poor ventilation. Um, customer gun safe, obviously. This is my most used workbench. It's a great height for me. It's covered in junk. Everything's getting cleaned up. This is actually a fun one, though. This is an MG13 magazine that's been converted for use in a Hakim. So if anyone has a Hakim and wants one, I have a mag for it. Uh, you know, this is another trick I learned a long time ago. So, like, commonly used tools I love to leave hanging on the end of the bench so they're really easy to get to, and there's some steel. You know, I keep sandpaper under there. This is my surface grinder I posted some videos on. You know, it's an old Boyer Schultz. You know, just a 6x12 is a great tool room size grinder. Perfect for my shop. Um, this is mostly my tool steel pile. I've got aluminum in here and some brass, but I want it to know if it's in this pile, it's tool steel. So I use this O1 to make, you know, special tools for the lathe or the mill. I have some W1 in there. I just, it was cheap and I bought it. This is an oil gun for lubing the mill because you have zerks on the milling machines, at least the old bridge ports, but you should use oil, not grease. Never grease, it'll harden. You know, the t compressor, you stick this guy in the back. It just, it's out of the way, it's behind the mill. It doesn't really interfere with the digital readout or the collet rack at all. Uh, but this is the same thing. So like my most commonly used tools go up the top. I use this for deburring. This is great. Stick lube is really awesome. Drill bits. This is a pretty expensive set from McMaster Car. Transfer punches. You know, strap clamps. I have my beater end mills here. I keep the good ones in a drawer. You know, I like to keep the good ones in a case so they don't get chipped or dulled. Um, I'm actually a huge proponent of roughing mills on these old manual machines. Um, I got a beat up one in the machine now. This has been dulled, but these roughing mills look like a corn cob and it's basically like giving yourself a free horsepower. These cut a lot, a lot, a lot easier than finishing mills. 
So this is really just like I was talking about. I keep one, two, three blocks. This is kind of like my goofy setup drawer. I've got V blocks for some stuff. I don't really use them that often. 90% um, of the milling work I do can be done in a vise. You know, the rest of it is I keep parallels and angle blocks and left-hand drill bits in here. This is kind of another, not really a rhyme or reason, but this is just where stuff goes. It's a sweet old post vise. It's a 5-inch, 70-pound Colombian. You really can't beat them, especially because I paid 150 bucks for it. This is the swivel base for the mill vise. It's, um, I don't really use it. It adds a lot of height, and you lose a little bit of rigidity with it. So for some setups, it's nice. You know, rotary table, three-jaw chuck for the lathe. This is a gunsmith's back plate, so I can do shorter barrel through the headstock. It's really nice. This is my dividing head and tail stock or foot stock for the mill. Uh, this is the lathe tool box. This is where I keep all my lathe tools, you know, high-speed steel blanks, you know, wrenches for changing parts out. These are for the uh, gunsmith's back plate or the spider, it, they're the same thread. Yeah, just more carbide insert tooling. You know, I always keep oil cans around for lubing everything. Uh, this is probably the most expensive box in the shop actually, but has no resale value because it's all ancient. This is my metrology box. So this is all my precision measurement, my precision layout tools. You know, I keep an alignment bar for the lathe. I always have a spare set of calipers. This is a coaxial indicator. I'll probably do a video on its own. This is a really neat tool that comes in handy. You know, drawers, drawers and drawers of stuff in here. Uh, I got some lathe turning tools. I actually just picked these up. I was given them. So I'm going to sharpen them, clean them up, and I'll probably put them aside for when I inevitably buy a wood lathe. You know, this is another... I keep wrenches and manuals and my surface plate in this drawer because I don't have a better place to put a surface plate. But that's... I like to keep the manual around for the lathe. This is another thing I learned is keep a drawer. So if you're most commonly cut threads, you can get all of your major and minor dimensions. It's a lot easier than trying to remember them. You know, this is my backup measuring tools and my gauge blocks. I like to keep spare micrometers. I think I have like 15. That's a sign bar. I'll do another video on that. That's for setting really precise angles on the mill. And just, this is really mostly random junk. There's nothing too exciting. Uh, these are old engine bearing scrapers for like big marine engines. They're cool to have around. I've never used them, but I'm not going to throw them out. You know, buffing wheels, which goes with the grinder over there. But I don't have a drawer to fit this stuff in on that side. So it's kind of living on this side of the shop for now until I rearrange the tools. You know, parts washer. This is an old steak anvil, which has been a junk collector. I've never used it, and I've had it for a year now. But I don't want to throw it out because it's really cool. And I can also move it over there to keep customers right by the door as a nice blocking tool. You know, this is actually my first anvil ever. I got this when I was 13 or 14, so I think I've had it for... 15 or 16 years now, I just cleaned up the top a little bit. Just took about 30 or 40,000 out to take the pits out. But I got that from, well, well, he was still alive, I got the anvil, but I got that from the same gentleman whose estate that came out of in the surface grinder. And really most of my other big machines, same thing with the torch. You know, it most of the big machines and the swedge block, most of the big stuff in the shop came out of his estate. You know, drawers, pliers. This is actually a neat trick. Is just I had some leftover Romex from when the shop got wired, so I coiled it, and it's a really good for your file drawers. It keeps them separated so you don't chip them. But this is mostly mechanics tools. It's nothing too exciting. I use this actually for fixing my machines. You know, I think I've got a drawer full of AK specific tools in here, but. Nothing too exciting, really. It's just, it's a nice shop. I got to clean it up more because it's just a complete mess. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hopefully you subscribe. Hope you guys have a nice rest of your day.